Good evening. Good evening. We're going to start the meeting, please. Notice is hereby given of the regular meeting of the Board of Education of the Town of Westfield in the County of Union, New Jersey at 7.30 p.m. on the evening of Tuesday, January 5, 2016 in the Roosevelt Intermediate School Auditorium, 301 Clark Street, Westfield, New Jersey. The purpose of the meeting is to transact the regular business of the board and to transact any other business to come properly before the board. This is to advise the general public and to instruct that it be recorded in the minutes that in compliance with Chapter 231 of the Public School Laws of 1975, entitled the Open Public's Meeting Act, the Westfield School Board on Tuesday, December 29th, 2015, caused to be posted at the Office of the Board of Education, located at 302 Elm Street, Westfield, New Jersey, and delivered to the Westfield Leader, the Star Ledger, the Westfield Library, Town Clerk of Westfield, Tap into Westfield, Westfield and Patch.com, a meeting notice setting forth the time, date, and location of this meeting. Please stand for the flag salute. At the annual election held on November 3rd, 2015, Robert Garrison, Gretchen Oleg, and Charles Ostroff were all elected for three-year terms to the Westfield Board of Education. All three of them were sworn in as um, board members prior to the start of this, me this, this meeting this evening, and congratulations to all three of them on um, their election. Um, first item on the agenda is the roll call. Mark Friedman. Brendan Galligan? Here. Robert Garrison? Present. Chris Langhart? Here. Ginny Lights? Yep. Gretchen Oleg? Here. Peggy Oster? Here. Charles Ostroff? Here. Mitch Slater? Here. The next item on the agenda is a nomination and election for Office of President. Do we have any nominations for President? Mark? Uh, I'd like to nominate Gretchen Oleg for the position of uh, President of uh, the uh, school board. Uh, Gretchen has been on the board for uh, four years approximately, came on um, right after I did, and for the last year she's served as vice president um, of the board and done a, a, a wonderful job, uh, and I think she'll do uh, an even better job as president. And I'd like to second that nomination. Any questions or comments? Okay, we'll take a roll call. Mark Friedman? Yes. Brendan Galligan? Yes. Robert Garrison? Aye. Chris Langhart? Yes. Ginny Lights? Yes. Gretchen Oleg? Yes. Peggy Oster? Yes. Charles Ostroff? Yes. Mitch Slater? Yes. Thank you. I just want to take a minute to thank my fellow board members for your faith in me. We have been very admirably led, and we'll miss Rich, um, but I'm humbled and I'm excited and uh, I'm ready to get started. So thank you all for your faith. Congratulations. Thank you. President will be to call for nominations and elections for the office of vice president. I would like to nominate Peggy Oster for vice president. In her short time on the board, she's worked with the uh, PTOs, the PTC. She's been uh, a liaison to the Garden State Coalition, and she's worked diligently on the uh, facilities and the curriculum committees. She's shown her dedication to this board, and I think she'd be a fine vice president, so I'd like to nominate her. Mark Friedman? Yes. Brendan Galligan? Yes. Robert Garrison? Aye. Chris Langhart? Yes. Ginny Lights? Gretchen Oleg? Yes. Peggy Oster? Yes. Charles Ostroff? Yes. Mitch Slater? Yes. Come on down and sit down here, and then we'll scooch in, and we'll all be one happy fam. 
Here, should we do that? I stay here, Peggy goes in. Sure. Okay. Bring your nameplate. As part of our reorganization meeting tonight, we are going to take the opportunity, uh, each of us as board members, to read aloud uh, and acknowledge the code of ethics by which we are obligated to oblige. I think it probably makes the most sense. Um, maybe, Robert, if you can start, if each of us will take one of the ten, and we'll just kind of loop through, read them out loud, and then at your places tonight, uh, make sure that you sign the acknowledgement and your agreement to abide by our code of ethics and return it to Dana before we leave. Um, Robert, if you'll start us off. I will uphold and enforce all laws, rules, and regulations of the State Board of Education and court orders pertaining to schools. Desired changes shall be brought about only through legal and ethical procedures. I will make decisions in terms of the educational welfare of children and will seek to develop and maintain public schools that meet the individual needs of all children, regardless of their ability, race, creed, sex, or social standing. I will confine my board action to policy making, planning, and appraisal, and I will help to frame policies and plan only after the board has consulted those who will be affected by them. I will carry out my responsibility not to administer the school, but together with my fellow board members to see that they are well run. I will refuse to surrender my independent judgment to special interest or partisan political groups or to use the schools for personal gain or the gain of friends. I will hold confidential all matters pertaining to the schools which, if disclosed, would needlessly injure individuals or the schools. In all other matters, I will provide accurate information and, in concert with my fellow board members, interpret to the staff the aspirations of the community for its school. I will vote to appoint the best qualified personnel available after consideration of the recommendation of the chief school, chief school officer. I will support and protect school personnel in proper performance of their duties. I'll read the last. I will refer all complaints to the chief administrative officer and will act on the complaints at public meetings only after failure of an administrative solution. Before we move on, I'd like to ask the board to consider um, items number four and five pertaining to the board's reorganization. Um, can I have a second? second? Mark, thank you. Dana, can I have a roll call? Mark Friedman? Yes. Brendan Galligan? Yes. Robert Garrison? Aye. Chris Langhart? Yes. Ginny Lights? Yes. Gretchen Oleg? Yes. Peggy Astor? Yes. Charles Ostroff? Yes. Mitch Slater? Yes. exciting portion of the event. I think Dr. Dolan and I are going to come down to the podium. So first and foremost, on behalf of the Westfield Board, I'd like to wish everyone a very happy uh, new year. Um, we have a lot of special guests, as you can tell, that join us tonight because there was a lot that happened in 2015 that was very exciting and a lot to be proud of. So first and foremost, I'd like to acknowledge the Westfield High School Championship, Westfield High School Blue Devils Championship Marching Band. Um, we have representatives of the band in attendance, and if you, if you all could please join me up front, uh, that would be great. So our hardworking, enormously talented, and dedicated Westfield High School Blue Devils marching band captured the U.S. Band's A-Class National Championship on November 8th in Allentown, Pennsylvania. Yeah, that's deserving. The band placed first out of 10 competing bands from New Jersey, Maryland, New York, Connecticut, and Massachusetts, scoring an amazing 96.738. The Blue Devils Marching Band received awards for best music and best overall effect at the competition. 
This performance capped off a very successful competitive season, which also included a third place finish at New Jersey States and first place at the Towson Music in Motion Northeast Regional Competition. The band's field show titled The Caged Bird Sings was based on poetry by Maya Angelou and included bird imagery throughout, such as flags designed to resemble wings, eight large gold cages, bird calls, and several stanzas of the poem recited by Westfield High School principal Peter Renwick. In addition to competitions, the marching band performed under the lights at the football championship held at MetLife Stadium on December 3rd, which was a proud evening for all Blue Devils. Tonight, we are pleased to have the student leaders for the 2015 season with us to represent the band. Dr. Dolan is gonna pre present you with certificates congratulating you on your achievements. When you hear your name, please come up and get your certificate. First, representing the, our drum majors, Albert Chen. <laughs> and Michael Haig. Next, our brass section leaders, Benjamin Cook. <laughs> Brian Lawrence. <laughs> and Sam Samantha Gargiulo, who I don't think could attend this evening, correct? She's not here? Okay. Um, our woodwind section leaders, Michael Bergman. Danielle Gabuzda. <laughs> Nova Key. <laughs> and Jack Ritter, who also could not be here this evening to join us. Percussion section leaders, Jake Barrow. <laughs> Lauren Brumfeld. Javier Lara and Zachary Modell. And last but not least, Color Guard Captains Ariana Alvarado and Kathleen Nogan. I want to take just a quick moment to also congratulate the following band members who are not in attendance this evening. If you'll bear with me, I'll just read their names very quickly because they certainly deserve to be recognized as well. Jillian Alvarado, Sarah Bernardis, Brianna Brown, Matthew Cafiro, Michael Charlton, Austin Chen, Duncan Cook, Stephanie Cook, Alessandra Dioler Lees, Rachel R. Parr, Ethan Joffe, Justin Joseph, Jesse Katz, Dylan Kerstedt. Amanda Latowski, Jasper Lemberg, Alexander McGrail, Wyatt Miller, Lisa Morgenthal, John Mulholland, Kate Murphy, Alan Naseth, Matthew Payton, Carl Peter, Christopher Rule, Mary Jo Sidham, Kier Solmont, Thomas Taffy, Ethan Usiloff, Andrew Wellnitz, Jeffrey Yang, our 10th graders, Charlie Bielek, Chloe Brown, Zach Composto, Joseph Enslin, Noah Enslin, Robert Federico, Jack Garceau, Stephen Hansey, Tyler Hoffman, Ben Kevelson, John Klitkushin, Rose Klofta, Audrey Leonard, Josh Markowitz, Nadia Matin, Melissa Moe, Michael Paglialunga, Lucille Ritter, Fiona Roger, Paul Sawina, Harry Schlanger, Daniel Schenker, Angelica Suris, Alan Wagner, Peter Wazik, Amanda Wisniewski, 11th grade, Del, Dale Bayert, Sydney Bryant, Gavin Kogan, Evan Gibbs, Samantha Greenaway, David Greenberg, Christopher Horner, Emily Holtzman, Mark Kostiak, Uma Lakshman, William Lampert, Philip Lizzo, Maximilian Martin, Michael McGrail, Alex Rosen, Matthew Schiff, Lizzie Villani, and finally our seniors, Isaac Amador, Julie Ann Quenza, Leo Delaney, Samantha Gargiulo, Natalie Carter, Emily Labrosi, Amanda Moe, Gianna Morello, Andrew Natko, Jacob Segal, Lauren Schnepp, 
Catherine Simon and Dylan Wickey. Hopefully I didn't ruin anybody's name. The 2015 Marching Blue Devils are under the leadership of band directors Chris Vitale and Trevor Sindorf. The assistant director is James Doyle. Music and marching instruction were overseen by John Cesaro and Maggie Fatsis. Percussion instruction by Brian Horn and color guard instruction by Danny Matos, Ashley Pierce, and Louisa Ruiz. We congratulate the directors and assistants on a most successful season, and I'd like to ask Mr. Vitale and Mr. Sindorf if either of you would like to come up and say a few words about your champions. Uh, thank you very much. Just uh, really quickly, I just wanted to thank uh, Dr. Dolan, uh, and I, I don't believe she's here tonight, but Dr. King, uh, just for their leadership and support of the marching band, and uh, the Board of Education for your support of marching band, but not only just the marching band, but just music in the school district and arts in the school district. I feel very fortunate as a teacher to work in a district uh, that is so supportive of the arts, and I think uh, the accomplishments of the marching band is just a small piece of the overall success of the school district. So thank you very much, and uh, on to next year. I think uh, we have a short video um, of a uh, short video of the band accepting their national award. So we'll watch that. And in first place, winning the Captain Award for Best Music and Best Overall Effect with a score of 96.738. That's 96.738. The 2015 U.S. Bands Group 5A Class National Champions, West Next, I'd like to invite our state champion football team, players and coaches, to the front of the room, please. Ladies and gentlemen, standing before us this evening, the Westfield High School Blue Devils State Championship football team. And what an incredible season they've had. So our Blue Devils were undefeated with a record of 12 and zero. They outscored opponents 412 to 103 throughout the season and captured the Wachung Division Mid-State 38 Championship. The team was ranked number one for all group five schools in the state, number one for the Mid-State 38 Conference, and number six in the final NJ.com poll for the entire state. MSG Varsity ranked the Blue Devils number 12 in the tri-state area, and we watched with pride at MetLife Stadium on December 3rd as our Blue Devils defeated Bridgewater Raritan to become the North Two Group Five State Championships. 
which marked Westfield High School's first state championship since 1977. So I want to take a moment to recognize just some individual accomplishments and then we'll get to everyone as a whole. First, senior Jack Curry. There he is. So Jack Curry set school records for rushing yards in a season and Oslo rushing yards for a career. He was named to the first team All-State All-Groups and first team All-State Group 5. Congratulations, Jack. Owen Kessler was named to the third team All-State All-Groups and first team All-State Group 5. Owen? Wherever you are. Not here? Oh, okay. <laughs> Owen Caldwell was named to the third team All-State All-Groups and first team All-State Group 5. Congratulations, Owen. And finally, Jacob Kerstet was named to the third team All-State Group 5. Congratulations, Jacob. <laughs> the entire team was honored in December at a Union County Freeholders meeting, and we're very pleased that they uh, agreed to take time out of their schedule to join us so that the Westfield Board of Education could recognize your accomplishments as well. So we have certificates for you. Um, please come forward as your name is called and Dr. Dolan will present you with a congratulatory certificate. Uh, our seniors first, Stephen Barmakian. <laughs> Christopher Bustakaris. <laughs> Brendan Cullum. Owen Caldwell. Jack Curry. Sid Douglas. James Hudja. Zach Kelly. Jacob Kerstad, <laughs> J.D. Marner, <laughs> Thomas Morley, <laughs> Tim Norris, <laughs> Michael O'Connor, Jelani Pierre, <laughs> Brett Robertshaw, <laughs> Robbie Suriano, <laughs> Eric Swanson, <laughs> Christopher Verano. And Devin Zrebeck. Our 11th graders, Ethan Bandelli. Kyle Dombrowski. We just elevated you to junior status. Sorry about that. Thomas Fusilio. Mike Gagliardi. Jeff Gagum. Ishmael Glasgow. Matthew Harris. Ian Humphrey, Jake Kaplan, 
Ben Kelly. Owen Kessler. Nicholas Marr. Philip Martini. Michael Moriarty. Connor Root. Connor Scanlon. Max Schwetzi. Jack Shirk. Kyle Shirk. Brett Spaz. Will Swartz. And Matt Verano. Our 10th graders, so Ethan Bandelli, do you want to come back up now? <laughs> Francis Allegro. Stephen Barden. We still don't have it. Sorry. This is Fran. And this is Ethan. Sorry, we'll get ourselves straight. Stephen Barden. Jordan Barham. Aiden Bolin, Robert Brown, Benito Bontempo, Christopher Colhane, Jacob Dayon, Anthony DiBella. Sean Dwyer, Shay Elliott, Shay Elliott, Wandre House, Robert Juchnik, Michael Juchnik. Eric Knaus, Jake Leary, John McCauley, Adam McDaniel, Rory McGovern, Isaac Montez, Jake Opsgarten. Drew Ortiz, Isaiah Reese, Joseph San Giacomo, Casey Shepper, Peyton Schluett, Jake Valibera. And Russell Weber. We all know it takes a lot of energy to practice and perform on the football field, and there are two individuals who make sure that our players have the support that they need. We want to take a moment to thank both Gabe and Rebecca Dayon for providing not only water but your loyalty and for being such great fans. So if you guys can come forward, we have certificates for you too. And now a big hand for the coaching staff under the most able direction of Jim DeSarno. We have certificates for you as well. Coach DeSarno and your assistants. Ken Miller, you have to. Yeah, we know. Oh, 
Oh, we don't have certificates, but please come forward. Joe Avina, Dave Hancock, Matt Enzel, Owen Brand, Don Dayon, Don Cassette, Bill Malott, and Sam Heyman. Do you want to say a few words about your champions? All right. Well, I, I'd like to start off by congratulating the band and thanking thank you for your support this year. It was a lot of fun to be able to share that experience at MetLife Stadium with you. I'd like to thank uh, the board and, and our administration at the high school for all the support that we've gotten all year long. I, I think the best part about this uh, championship or this season was what a great group of young men we had and, and how well they represented the community of Westfield and did a great job of that all year long, not just in the final, but all throughout the season. I'd like to thank you, you know, they, they had a great season. It's been a magical season. We're excited. We're still celebrating a little, but we're on to, to next year and just want to say thank you to everybody. Um, before we let you guys sit down, Peter, do you want uh, to say a few words? Great. Good evening, everyone. It is quite an honor to be able to um, be here tonight with all of you uh, for these two wonderful celebrations. For some time now, I've talked about uh, the fact that I am, and I introduce myself as a proud principal of Westfield, the proud principal of Westfield High School, and you have, you know, uh, about a hundred reasons why standing in front of you tonight. Um, Coach DeSarno said it, this has been a magical season for both programs. Um, I often talk about the fact that our students succeed on so many levels, from the fine arts to community service to academics and to athletics. And these programs exemplify the excellence that is the Westfield tradition. So I want to congratulate everyone for the hard work, uh, for the effort that was made to bring these successes, to, to have this magical season. Um, to Coach Vitale, I call you Coach, I you know you're a coach. Coach DeSarno, your dedication, the vision that you had to bring these programs to fruition. Um, but most importantly, and to certainly to your coaching staff and to everyone that worked so hard with you, uh, but most importantly, to say thank you to all the representatives of each of these programs, because you did represent Westfield High School with such great pride. We are proud of you. We are proud of what you've accomplished. We know that you will go on, seniors, and continue to represent us um, with that distinction uh, wherever you choose to go to next year. And what a wonderful example you've set for those that follow in your footsteps uh, to carry on that tradition. It was magical, like everyone that was here tonight. It was fun to watch both programs succeed. They've reached the pinnacle, the highest. You couldn't do any better. And I just want to say, again, thank you. We're proud of you. Keep up the great work. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you guys again, and congratulations, both of you. Thank you very much. Attendance report. Do uh, does any, do any of the other board members have any announcements at their seats? Excuse me. The Westfield Public School District will be registering children who will become eligible for kindergarten in the 2016-2017 school year. The district also is interested in reaching children who have not attended the Westfield Public Schools for kindergarten, but will enter first grade in the fall. Information on dates, times, locations, and forms for registration is available under the Parents tab at www.westfieldnjk12.org. I'd like to recognize the public for agenda items only. Seeing no one come forth, we'll move to the superintendent's report. Dr. Dolan. 
Yes, yeah, so tonight is January 5th, 2016, and in a, a few short weeks, on January 26th, we're presenting two questions for bonds to the public in Westfield, and so our presentation tonight will be on the uh, bond referendum, and I'd like our business administrator, Dana Sullivan, to uh, make that presentation. Not before we move forward, no. I'd like that to go to the minutes of our board meeting held on December 8th, 2015 and the private minutes of December 8th, 2015. Can I have a second, please? Ginny, thank you. Uh, Dane, do we do roll call or just? Oh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Abstentions? Okay. Personnel, Mr. Friedman. Uh, professional, Mr. Friedman. Uh, I'd like the board to consider personnel items 1 through 23. Uh, can I have a second? Uh, sorry, I didn't catch. Mitch? Okay, Mitch, thank you. Um, Dr. Dolan, you have a comment? Um, I actually have a comment on the, um, on the addendum, which is number 24. Oh. So if you want, you can vote first on 1 to 23. Okay, my apologies. That's okay. So let's vote on that, Dana. Mark Friedman. Yes. Brendan Galligan. Yes. Robert Garrison. Yes. Chris Langhart. Yes. Ginny Lights. Yes. Gretchen Oleg. Yes. Peggy Oster. Yes. Charles Ostroff. Mitch Slater. Yes. Okay, and then uh, I'd like the board to consider personnel item number 24, which was an addendum at your table. I'd like to second that. Too. Okay, Mitch, thank you. Uh, Dr. Dolan? Yes, um, on the agenda item, I'm very pleased to recommend David Dolks to be the principal of Tamaqua School. Mr. Dolks has served admirably as acting principal at Tamaqua for 10 months. During that time, he has demonstrated proven leadership skills while building positive relationships with all school stakeholders. The district underwent an established search pro process in order to make this selection. In this process, parents, teachers, administrators, and representing the board, Mr. Slater, participated in um, resulting in interviews with several candidates. No one who was interviewed was better qualified, dedicated, or prepared as Mr. Dolks. His leadership experience at Tamaquas is combined with four years as assistant principal of Edison Intermediate School and four years as the district coordinator of gifted education. Mr. Dolks began his career as a teacher in Edison Intermediate School in 1998 and he is a proud graduate of our schools as well. He is thoroughly familiar with our policies and procedures. He knows our community and is a highly capable administrator. And so I'm very pleased tonight to make a recommendation to the board to appoint David Dulks to be principal of Tamaqua School. I, I'd just like to add as a, as, a, as a representative on the board on the, on the search committee, congratulations first of all, Mr. Dulks. Um, I, we, it was uh, hiring process is always uh, a challenging process. Interviewed a lot of very, very strong candidates. Um, but I am very, very excited about this decision. I'm very excited for the parents, for the teachers, and especially for the students of Tamaqua School. They are in for, they're as, as they already know, in for, in for a real treat. Um, I was thinking about starting a second family and do it all over again. Um, <laughs> Just thinking about it, just that, that's all. Um, anyway, congratulations and, and wish, you, wish you the best. Mark Friedman. Yes. Brendan Galligan. Yes. Robert Garrison. Yes. Chris Langhart. Yes. Ginny Lights. Yes. Gretchen Oleg. Yes. Peggy Oster. Yes. Charles Ostroff. Mitch Slater. Yes. Congratulations. I cannot be any more honored and privileged to be the next principal of Tamaquas Elementary School. Dr. Dolan, 
thank you for your vote of confidence and your support of me over my years here as a teacher, as a coach, and now as an administrator for the Westfield Public Schools. President Oleg, the board, I cannot thank you enough for your vote of confidence and support. Barbara Ball, thank you for your support over the years. Many years ago, as a young child riding my bicycle past Tamaqua School with my brothers and heading over to the park to play on the fields of Tamaquis or riding through the woods or to fish on the pond, never did I think I would be a principal of Tamaquis Elementary School. As I said, I cannot be any more proud. And it's, this is a privilege to work in such a fantastic community such as Westfield, and it's not something that I take for granted. Yes, I've had the beautiful opportunity to be a student in the Westfield schools, and I've had the opportunity to be taught and coached by numerous individuals that help mold me and shape me into the person that I am today. And I wouldn't be that person without many of those teachers and coaches that I've had through the years. As an administrator for the past few years of Edison Intermediate School, I've worked with fantastic colleagues and fellow administrators and supervisors that have also helped me get to this position where I am today, and I thank all of them for their support. To the Tamaquas community, I can assure you that no one will work as hard as I will work for you. I am so proud and honored to work with such an amazing staff. We've already begun the journey. We've been together for over 10 months and we've already started to do some, some great things. And I know that we will continue to do many great things for children and for the parents and for the Westfield community. I also want to recognize and thank the Tamaquas PTSO, PTO for their support over the past 10 months in their partnership. Again, I'd like to just close with that. I will continue to honor this community with dignity, with respect, and with pride, and work hard for our children. Thank you very much. Else? Personnel, Mark? Nope, I'm good. Thank you. Um, we don't have a facilities report tonight, uh, although we will be talking about it in connection with the bond, so we'll just defer that. Um, long range planning. Ginny, any report? Yes. Um, let's see what I've got here. <clears throat> I just wanted to make note that um, Superintendent has proposed representatives for our Strategic Planning Council which will be meeting on February 6th and March 19th. Uh, the committee uh, has been drawn from uh, administration and supervisors. The board members will be there, <coughs> central staff members, um, staff and teaching uh, employees, as well as 13 residents. Um, Many are parents or grandparents of graduates or current students, and uh, some are graduates themselves of the Westfield Public Schools. <clears throat> I understand the um, Long Range Planning Committee has had the opportunity to take a look at the proposed list and made some um, notices to Dr. Dolan for some additions or um, possible revisions, and so we look forward to uh, the opportunity to review a revised list very shortly. And we look forward to the opportunity to join in on the council planning sessions in February and March. Great, thank you. Policies, I think, Chris, you're going to take policies for us tonight, correct? Yes, yes. Uh, we have three items on policies. I'd like to move the first two together. Um, a qu couple quick comments on both. The first relates to the calendar. Uh, we did have some comments from some of the parents about the Friday graduation that was addressed by the board leadership. Uh, we will have a Friday graduation for this coming school year, so uh, 
we will have a dry run with that, see how well it works, uh, and we can modify it if we have to, although I don't anticipate we will. The second uh, is a uh, second reading for two policies. The first policy, 2431.1, establishes a procedure for requests for new athletic programs. We talked about that briefly at the last meeting. The second is policy 8550, uh, required and it establishes procedures for families that don't pay their bills for school lunches. That's not really a problem for our district, but we are required by law to have a policy, so we're implementing it tonight. Uh, if anybody has any questions, I'll do my best to answer them. If not, I would ask that the first two items be moved. I guess we need a second first. Do you need second from the agenda? Or any conversations, anybody have questions for Chris? Okay. Friedman? Yes. Brendan Galligan? Yes. Robert Garrison? Aye. Chris Langhart? Yes. Ginny Lights? Yes. Gretchen Oleg? Yes. Peggy Oster? Yes. Charles Ostroff? Yes. Mitch Slater? Yes. The third item under policies is an affirmation of the superintendent's decision on HIV incident 16HSO2 uh, for the reasons that have been set forth. I would ask somebody to second. Is that Ginny? Ginny second. Mark Friedman? Yes. Brendan Galligan? Yes. Robert Garrison? Aye. Chris Langhart? Yes. Ginny Lights? Yes. Gretchen Oleg? Yes. Peggy Oster? Yes. Charles Ostroff? Mitch Slater? Yes. Anything else, Chris? Uh, no, that's it for policies. Thank you. Um, for curriculum instruction and programming, I'm going to turn it over to Paul. I think we have a, a brief review of our state assessment results. And uh, welcome to our new board members. So tonight I'm going to provide, uh, you might remember in the fall we did uh, an overview of state assessments that didn't include PARC, the PARC scores weren't in yet. So at that time we looked at ACT, SAT and AP test results. So tonight we'll focus on PARC and um, those test scores went out right before the holiday to parents so it's timely for us to review it at this point. It was the first year of the PARC assessments which are online and uh, we covered uh, some of that in uh, our board meeting since last year. So I think I'll jump right in and if there are questions about it, we can answer them. So uh, first you'll see where we were tested and that you can see is every single grade. So there was English language arts, ELA, and there was math. So this shows you that uh, grades three through eight as well as nine, 10, and 11, we had testing for both ELA and math. Our next slide uh, shows us how the new park testing levels are set. Uh, in the, the old testing regime, which was New Jersey ASK, there was a different setup. This one is set into five levels, not three. Uh, level one is an indicator that students are not yet meeting grade level expectations. Uh, level two is partially meeting grade level expectations. Three is approaching. Four is meeting grade level expectations. And five would be exceeding grade level expectations. So after... Uh, in the next slide, you'll see some perspective to put on this. After the testing, we reviewed the results. We talked to students. We talked to teachers who administered the test. Principals were very much involved with getting a sense of how um, the testing was experienced across the board. And um, after getting the results in, we, we had a discussion or two and came up with four main points that are worth sharing as perspective for the test results. One is that at each grade level, and in both ELA and math, Westfield students performed above the state and the park states nationally. So that's pretty standard in Westfield. Um, those two comparative data points we uh, exceeded. Uh, another point of perspective is that park scores are a new baseline. Westfield will not be using them as a determining factor for student placement in courses and programs. We do a lot of in-district assessment. Uh, we have many measures to indicate how students are doing in their coursework and uh, we will rely heavily on those other in-district indicators until uh, such time that PARC has been in place for a while. And we're not talking about baseline data, but we're talking about longitudinal year-to-year -year data. 
another point of perspective. Participation rates varied widely throughout the state. Uh, we had a relatively high participation rate here in Westfield, um, but they ranged widely from districts that may have had 20% uh, that we even know of, not too far from our district, towards uh, districts that might have been more in line with our participation rate. So that's an important thing to keep in mind. Um, when you look at the state, when the state presented their results, uh, we have to keep that in mind as well, that the, the state, uh, across the state, different districts had different kinds of participation rates. And lastly, um, across the state, influences such as school philosophies, parent concerns, local, state, and national politics have impacted the level at which students attended to the tests. So um, when we put that into perspective, there was a lot going on last last year uh, in the newspapers, on television. Uh, we saw it nationally, probably at the federal level in some discussions and hearings in government. So this has been a hot topic. It seems to have settled down a bit since the testing. Um, we survived it and we, we, we conducted the testing very well. And um, I think that, that you're still going to hear some of the um, concerns about it and so forth, but uh, here we, we handled it well and, and we're happy to present the results. So in our first slide of results, you'll see in the very first column ELA, which is English Language Arts. So this whole slide is pertaining to English. In the second column, uh, you'll see that that's the count of valid test scores. That's the number of students that took the test. So you see that ranges from grade three all the way up to grade 11. Uh, the first two columns are uh, level one and two. That's not yet meeting and partially meeting the um, expectations. In levels three, four, and five, the next three columns after that, we have approaching expectations, meeting expectations, and exceeding expectations. The first blue column, all the way down toward the right, is a column that combines the uh, approaching, meeting, and exceeding expectations levels. And um, you, you, you know, see those through grades three through 11. And then in the final uh, column there, the second blue one, those are meeting or uh, ex exceeding expectations, which are levels four and five. So first blue column is level three, four, and five, and the second blue column is level four and five. Um, so when we received the results, we looked at them, we tried to put them into some kind of uh, context. Um, there's some pretty high numbers there for approaching or higher, which are columns three, four, and five, which were pretty typical and, and we're accustomed to seeing here in Westfield. Uh, in looking over the results, we did notice that in grades 9, 10, and 11, uh, there are percentages that don't seem in line with grades 3 through 8. So we looked into that, we compared it with math, which I'll be talking about in a minute, and um, we received some feedback from students and teachers, and um, as you recall, last year there was a lot of controversy surrounding the testing, and it does appear that that impacted uh, some of the testing with regard to language arts. So those numbers are a little lower than what we would expect if we had uh, students that had shown up. We had a large participation rate, but we might not have had the, uh, the level of commitment that you would expect, uh, unfortunately, or naturally, I should say. Uh, students are affected by what they hear around them, and uh, they heard quite a bit about the testing. Not to mention that high school is difficult and challenging, and our students work really hard. They had other testing in front of them, such as AP tests and so forth. So um, I think that that number reflects some of that. Uh, with that in mind, our next slide demonstrates in the same testing year that our uh, SAT mean comparisons are still significantly above the state and nation. So um, to put that in perspective, uh, it looks like the tests that have traditionally been aligned with college and career readiness, as we like to say, uh, SAT and then um, the subsequent slide will be ACT, you see that Westfield, that same exact group of students, or at least the class of 2015, uh, 2016, that they all excelled in ACT and SAT, which has been in place as an indicator of excellence for many years, and we have been uh, above the state and national levels in that for many years. So we have to take that into account when we look at the English language arts scores at the high school. Okay, the next slide is mathematics. Uh, so it's a similar layout for math, um, grades three through eight, and then algebra one, geometry, and algebra two. 
same deal. We have the number of students that took the test in the first column, and then the levels are spread out after that. And the same thing with columns, uh, the, the two blue columns, uh, the first one being approaching or higher, or levels, great, or levels three, four, and five, and then the second blue column being four and five. Um, what's interesting about this? Well, you see similar, similar uh, high scores, and when it gets to eighth grade, there's something worth pointing out. Uh, across the state, and you see a note on the, the slide there that comes from the state, uh, students in eighth grade that are uh, qualified, that are of a skill level that can take Algebra 1 will take it. So if I ask you to look at um, Math 8's number of students, you'll see there were 190 students who took the uh, Math 8 test. Well, there were many more than 190 students in the eighth grade uh, testing. And that was because many of our eighth graders, a good deal of them, take Algebra 1. So, um, you know, to restate that perhaps more clearly, um, math, there's, at the eighth grade level, students may take Math 8 or Algebra 1, depending on the level that they're in. So, when you see the Algebra 1 score there, it reflects not just for the 477 students, includes eighth graders. So, what that would suggest is that um, the Math 8 students are, uh, with sub subtracted from that population would be the students that you uh, would qualify for Algebra 8 or it may be achieving level 5s. I think the 0% for level 5 actually suggests that our, uh, that our students who are in 8th grade and can attain a 5 are in Algebra 1, which is what you would want to do. Um, that's a placement issue. I don't know. I think it is a testament to our good placement. But anyway, the bottom line is that uh, Across the state, most many eighth grade students take Algebra One, not the eighth grade math assessment. Let me stop there for a second and ask if you need clarification because I talked around that a little bit. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Great. So uh, beyond that, Algebra One geometry and Algebra Two scores are in there as well. And in the next slide, you see that ACT is also well above um, the scores that you see in state and the nation. So. Um, Park, it's their first year in testing. It's a baseline year for that. Um, so we take it, we look at it, we see what we can learn from it, and there's plenty of useful information in the results that we receive, uh, but we also put that into the perspective of tried and true and uh, long-term data that we've had with regard to SAT and ACT and AP testing as well. So um, I, I think that all of that puts into perspective this first year of Park. If there are any questions about it, um, I'll be glad to answer them. So the assessment schedule for 2015-16, uh, we're going to to one one test. Right. Great. Um, very good. So th this this next slide um, demonstrate just shows you when the testing will happen. So this year, instead of you might remember last year, there were two windows. There was the PBA, the performance-based assessment, and then there was the end-of-year assessment. One took place in early spring, one took place in late spring, and that was a lot of testing. Um, as a result of, again, that pushback that was received from many different areas, uh, Park then combined, the state along with Park, combined those two windows into one to save some time for this year. In other words, to put back instructional time into the year. And so we will be able to achieve some of that and we will regain some instructional time. So now the testing window, um, combines all three, the three sections of language arts, the three sections of math in one shot. Um, last year, there were many more um, sections over the two types of testing. So that's, that's a blessing, and um, you know, that'll all take place in April into May. Jenny? Oh. Uh, what's the district gonna do with this information? Well, there are a couple things. Um, the, there's a database that we uh, were able to look at um, and receive some training in that can disaggregate the data and really break it down so that we can identify maybe areas that the, uh, the students could use more work in and uh, it indicates in this database right away what standards they are. So if there's, certain, uh, if there's a certain bunch of questions that our students struggled with, it would immediately point to the standard and indicate what standard that we can look up, see how it's in our, how, how it's working in our curriculum, how it's being instructed in the classrooms. Um, it, it's 
there was something, there is another, th that's not available to us yet. I'm going to another workshop tomorrow and they're going, it's called Changes in Part. And I think that's redundant. But um, one of the other reports that we did receive broke down uh, results. And the parents reports say this as well. There are five different kinds of skill sets in language arts that are reported on. And we can look at those five and see if there were areas like one was vocabulary. There's two types of writing, two types of reading. So um, we look at those and we see if any one of those seems weaker. We have a lot of balance. I did look at those. I actually brought them with me, but they're boringly consistent. I mean, you know, for the most part, you see that 80% of students that, uh, in each of those areas, 80% are, are in those levels of three, four, five. So nothing jumps out at us uh, with that data, but there's still more. Each individual student actually has the same kind of report. So um, when you look closely at those student reports, if there are arrows indicating you know, meeting or not meeting expectations, that immediately points to that area that the student could use some support in. I had a discussion with Dr. Bolton on the phone today, and we're looking at one report as, a, as like a case study to see you know, how we can start sharing those with teachers and, and trying to differentiate even to that level. I mean, again, we do have a lot of balance in, in our instruction and in our performance, um, but still for individual students, we might be able to, to use these reports um, in that way, which will be good. Can you comment on um, <coughs> what the general reaction of the parent population has been, if, if you've had time to get any reactions? Uh, what, are you referring to students? Well, the in response to the the, the parents the have received the reports out. of their oh, individual Oh, sure, sure. We've students, had very right? little response, and um, you know, it's been a busy time of year. The scores came out just before the holidays, mm -hmm. um, so we. I had today. I spent some time on the phone discussing the actual report itself and a student's individual report. So we popped it up and looked at it, and walked through it. And um, but I've received maybe five calls, and um, we talked to at least the secondary principals today. And, and they had just a, a small handful as well, certainly not double digits. So. Are we, uh, how are we supporting parents' understanding of the information mm -hmm. so that they can guide their children and interact with their teachers? Right, so um, there are a couple of resources that are on this PowerPoint, um, and they include the school report that went home, um, as well as this video that you can go to, understandthescore.org. Um, the score report itself walks a parent through, uh, the mailing actually provided a step-by-step -step annotated report, um, sort of a model report that demonstrated how to read that. But it, there's a lot in there and it can be complicated. So I do encourage parents to do two things. On our website we have uh, a number of links in addition to just the ones I'm mentioning here. That includes the letter that we sent but it also includes letter, uh, it also includes links to state and park resources. But um, when all is said and done, um, I would say call the principals and the principals can speak with me or the, uh, the two supervisors um, to get more information if they would like on how their student did and, and what we'll be doing about the scores. Is there, uh, is there plans for the elementary schools to hold PTO meetings for the conversation about the tests or do you think they're more individual? I'm, I'm meeting with the principals meeting. next week, which is the first opportunity since we've really made the reports um, public, and we're going to discuss part, that's the number one reason I'll be there, to discuss um, the, the information, that, the reports themselves and what we've made of it and what they may like to do with it and, and sharing it with the community. Okay, thank you. Um, do you know when you're going to put out the exact timetable for the park for 2016? That's a great question. Um, we met today actually with the secondary principals and so it's, as I said, there's a blessing that the window is smaller, um, but we also have to take a few things into account with regard to the scheduling, um, the testing maybe at the secondary level. So um, those windows will be available, I would say maybe six to eight weeks where we'll have a specific schedule available for when, I mean those were just the windows, as, which I think is your point but when students will be actually testing, I would say six to eight weeks. Okay, because I think that you may get a lot of parent input once you bring that calendar out again. So they become aware that their students will be taking them again on a particular day. So because the results went out 
at the Christmas holiday, um, you know, I think that that may bring it back up again. So I think the principal should be aware that once you say we're taking it again, they may go back to say, by the way, what does this mean? Sure. You might get lost in the Christmas shuffle. And I'm, we did discuss that today. Right. And, and the PTO meetings, principals will be prepared to have those discussions. I know that uh, Dr. Bolton is planning to do it this week. So. Anybody else? Great. Thank you, Paul. Okay. Um, I'm going to turn the floor over to Dr. Dolan uh, for a presentation of our district and school self-assessment report. Okay. Um, actually, at the first meeting of the um, of this school year, um, I presented and the board approved the school self-assessments that are required by the New Jersey's Anti-Bullying Bill of Rights. Uh, but the state also requires, once the state reviews those self-assessments, that then they are, they don't require approval again, but they need a public review. So that's what I'm presenting now. The review um, is conducted at each school. There is a team as required by the um, state law. Uh, there's a team in each school that reviews um, the work in the previous year about what sorts of programs regarding harassment, intimidation, and bullying what sorts of training was provided, what sort of um, staff instruction was provided, what type of curriculum was used. The, the um, individuals who are called the anti-bullying specialists, did they receive up-to-date training? What about the incident reporting? How, was that accomplished according to code and law? What the investigation itself, how was that conducted? And also the required state reporting. So on all those factors, each team in each school has to rate themselves. Um, the highest you can reach in the rating is 78. That is the highest score each school could reach. You can see on the slide that um, for the 2014-15 school year, our schools had uh, scores from ranging from 71 to 77. And you can see that in the previous year, the scores were somewhat similar to that. Again, each year they look at it again. It's an ongoing process. Um, it requires every year reflecting, seeing where you want to put emphasis, what worked well, what didn't, what do you need to change for the following year. The state also requires that a district average, which is just an average of each individual uh, school's self-assessment, uh, is also reported. Our district average happens to have been 73, both for the 2014-15 year and the year prior to that. And as is required by the state, the grades from each school, the total grade for each school, and the total grade for the district will be posted on our website. The law is very specific, and we have to have it up with a certain number of days, so that will be on our website. And a very important part of this presentation um, anytime a parent or a student feels as though um, they are being uh, bullied or not being treated appropriately, each school has at least one anti-bullying specialist. If you contact the, those individuals, they will um, either take your complaint or answer questions. Um, it's very important that we stay vigilant on this. We don't want any of our students, no matter what their age, to feel intimidated, and that is ongoing work. Um, so the names that are on the screen right now are the anti-bullying specialists for each of our schools, and the anti-bullying coordinator for the district is Joseph Malanga, who is the principal of Wilson School. Does anybody have any questions for Dr. Dolan? Okay, then moving on, I'd like to ask the board to consider curriculum uh, items one and two as set forth on the agenda. Can I have a second, please? Ginny, thank you. Any questions, comments? Dana? Yes. Wendy Galligan? Yes. Robert Garrison? Aye. Chris Reinhardt? Yes. Jimmy Light? Yes. Gretchen Oblick? Yes. Peggy Oscar? Yes. Carl Gottschalk? Ms. Slater? Yes. Um, maybe before we move forward, it's uh, 845, so should we loop back and do the bond presentation, Dana? So as Dr. Dolan stated earlier, our referendum is three weeks away, um, and we're going to go over the presentation that we've presented. It's very similar to the previous presentations, um, but we'll go through it again, and I'll answer any questions that the board has. Um, so as you know, we have divided this question into the re referendum into two questions. 
question one is what we're terming our safety and infrastructure projects. Um, we will replace fire alarms in 10 district buildings. Um, there are two schools which have had replaced, um, their alarms replaced already. That's Roosevelt and the high school, so they will not get a replacement, but all the other schools in two non-school buildings will have new fire alarms. All 10 schools will have new public address systems installed. Um, both the fire alarms and the public address systems are 20 years or older in all of our buildings, um, and that's why we're replacing them, because we're reaching a point where they're beyond their useful life. Um, we are gonna replace switches and Wi-Fi upgrades in the elementary schools. This is a project that we started several years ago at the high school. Um, last summer we moved to the middle schools and we're gonna continue that um, at the elementary school. The funding in the bond is for part of this project um, and the other part of the funding will come from the operating budget and that's to maximize the amount of state aid that we receive um, for both, for this entire project. Um, we are gonna replace multi-purpose rooms floors at the multi-purpose rooms in three of our school buildings. We're gonna replace the boilers at Jefferson, Roosevelt, the high school, and Wilson. Um, and we are gonna replace the retractable gym door at the high school, that's for safety reasons. Um, and we're gonna install barrier-free access at both McKinley and Roosevelt, which will make those buildings um, entirely um, accessible to a handicapped person. And then all of our buildings will be uh, accessible. Um, this is just a picture to show the high school boilers. They're, all of the boilers that we're replacing are 35 to 50 years old. Um, the newer ones are much smaller and more efficient, and uh, as you can tell, these are quite old. <clears throat> this is a picture of students at Wilson School working in the halls on the floor because they can't access the Wi-Fi in the classroom, so that's why we're gonna do the um, upgrade so that they will have access in all of the classrooms. And that's similar in, in other, all of our other elementary schools as well. Um, we were approved for every project in question one and two to receive 40% of the cost of the project from the state in the form of state aid. Um, and that will be for the life of the debt service. So question one is a total cost, estimated cost of $8.6 million. Um, right now we're assuming a two and a half to three percent interest rate when we sell those bonds. The rates are actually lower than that right now, um, but being conservative in our estimates, we, we went a little high. Um, so if we decide to sell those bonds for a 10-year term, the average increase to an average homeowner would be $62.83. Um, and if we decided to sell it over a 20-year term, it would be about $36.60 per year for an average homeowner. So question two, which is a separate, um, totally separate question, um, they will be voted on as two independent questions that um, can each can either pass or fail. And question two is for upgrades to the auditoriums at both Roosevelt and Edison Intermediate School. Um, that will include replacement of seats um, and the installation of barrier-free seats, um, the replacement of the sound system, installation of acoustical treatments, um, it'll provide barrier sta free st stage access. It will provide for electrical and lighting upgrades, including lighting, stage lighting upgrades. Um, it'll re include replacement of the floors, and it will also include air conditioning. Um, here's a picture, you're sitting in Roosevelt right now, so you can, can see it without seeing the picture. Um, so as you can tell, these rooms are very old, probably in excess of 85 years old. Um, we can no longer replace the parts on the seats. So as the seats are broken, and you can see those in the picture, we can't buy replacement parts um, for them, which is one of the issues. And as you start removing seats to um, install new seats, you have to re remove the floors because ripping out the seats requires you to remove the floors. Um, and it's, it goes on from there. Um, I think you can all tell that the sound, I know I can't hear some of the sound that's coming from the other end of the, the room, um, so you can tell that the sound in here also needs some upgrades. And again, this, the entire projects for both Edison and um, Roosevelt will receive funding, 40% funding from the state of New Jersey in the form of debt service aid. 
The estimated cost for question two is approximately $4 million. Um, and if those bonds are sold for a 10-year term, the average home homeowner would see an increase of $29.39 per year. And uh, over 20 years, the average homeowner would see an increase of $60.88 per year. Um, so the timeline, the applications were submitted to the Department of Ed in November. Um, the Department of Ed, late November, early December, approved all of the applications. On December 8th, the board approved the exact questions that will appear on the ballot. Um, January 19th is the date that all votes that are submitted by mail are due in the county clerk, Union County Clerk's Office. Um, January 26th will be the election, and that will be the regular time of uh, regular general election, so it will be 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. Um, and then assuming that in each or both of these questions is approved, the construction will begin in summer of 2016, and some projects will continue on um, into the next summer. Um, and just in summary, the benefits of these referendums are first and foremost to keep schools safe for our students and staff, um, protect our infrastructure, provide upgrades for education and compliance with building and state codes, um, and to remain fiscally prudent and uh, take advantage of funding that's currently available from the state, as well as um, favorable interest rates and construction costs. So are there any questions from any board members on the referendum? Uh, I just have uh, a couple of com one comment, uh, Dana. Um, I'd like to remind the public that there'll be three more informational sessions on the bond at the following dates and times. First one is Thursday, January 14th at 7 p.m. Uh, that'll be held here at Roosevelt, uh, Roosevelt Intermediate School Auditorium, 301 Clark Street. Uh, this meeting will be hosted by the by schools PTOs townwide. The second one will be Tuesday night, January 19th at 7:30 p.m. at the Board of Education Building, 302 Elm Street, Room 105. Uh, the Board of Education meeting will include a discussion of the bond uh, at that time as well. And then the third, the uh, third um, public meeting will be on Thursday, January 21st at 10.15 a.m., uh, also at the Board of Education Building, 302 Elm Street, Room 105, uh, and this meeting will be hosted by the Parent Teacher Council and the school's PTOs. Uh, also, information is available and updated on our website at westfieldnjk12.org. Thank you. Just a reminder to the board members, um, if you have a PTO liaison assignment that you can't make, especially in the coming weeks, to reach out and find a replacement um, so that we can be available uh, to our PTOs and parents to answer questions they may have about the bond. Jenny? I just wanted to also remind the public that uh, <laughs> there is a bond website available on, this, on the public school's website. Uh, there's a page that has uh, what we call bond bites, small pieces of information that give you um, the salient points of the bonds. Um, questions one and two, there's a conversation that um, the finance committee uh, had put together. Mark has uh, authored some strong information that's available and uh, some history of um, the facility needs and uh, the reason why the public schools use bonds to fund uh, major capital improvements. Oh, right. Does anyone from the public have any questions about the bond? Um, questions for Dana? Okay. Seeing no one come forward, we'll jump back into uh, where we finance. were on the agenda. Finance. Mark. Uh, I'd like the board to consider finance items one through four. Can I have a second? Ginny, thank you. Any questions? Nope. Dana, please. Mark Freeman. Yes. Brendan Galligan. Yes. Robert Garrison. Aye. Chris Langhart. Yes. Ginny Leitz. Yes. Gretchen Oleg. Yes. Peggy Oster. Yes. Charles Ostroff. Yes. Mitch Slater. Yes. That's it. Um, legislation. Brendan, any report? Uh, just a quick update. Uh, the Legislative Assembly uh, just started their next session. 
so all outstanding bills that were going through last year, they're done. So we're just starting fresh. We keep following everything. Uh, no report will be meeting later this month. I'd like to ask the board to note the notes for the record. Um, do we have any unfinished business? Seeing none, I'll move to new business. Um, at your seats tonight was an updated version of our committee and liaison assignments that uh, we assigned. Um, I circulated it and hopefully if anyone had any issues they've gotten back to me and I responded appropriately. Um, certainly talk to me offline, but these are our committee assignments moving forward for the remainder of this year. Our liaison assignments pretty much stayed the same unless we had a vacancy and then I slated folks in. Um, so just please take notice of it because folks have moved around a little bit and uh, take a look at the blue notes so that you know when your upcoming committee meetings are. Let me know if you have any questions. And thank you to folks who are stepping up to chair all of our committees. I appreciate it. Um, speaking of which, do we have any liaison reports? Okay. Uh, I'd like to recognize the public for questions and or comments. Seeing none, I would ask the board to approve the following resolution. Be it resolved that the Board of Education move into private session for the purpose of discussing legal matters rendered confidential by state and federal law, negotiations and harassment, intimidation and bullying incidents. Resolved that any discussion held by the Board which need not remain confidential and the results of the discussions will be made public as soon as practicable. All in favor? Aye. 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 We are adjourned. Are we moving to... Uh, are we moving? 106. 106.